This is lesson 203, Paleolithic versus Neolithic. And we've got some essential questions here. What was the Neolithic Revolution? I mean, what was it? And when did it happen? What was a hunter-gatherer? What caused the Neolithic Revolution? And how does this guy in the cartoon know that it's called a village when he's never seen one before? So let's just take a look at this cartoon. It gives us a hint as to where all this is going. And the title says, Why Hunt? Why Gather? Join the Neolithic Revolution. And you've got these two hunter-gatherers, and they're talking, and one says, How goes the hunt? And the other says, Not so great. How's gathering? So-so. And then one says, Look, a village. I wonder what they do over there. And a villager actually comes up and scares the heck out of him and says, Excuse me, I couldn't help but over here. Let me tell you about living the Neolithic way. And he says, First off, we don't just look around for our food. We actually grow some of it ourselves where we live. And these two hunter-gatherers say, Gasp! And they can't believe it. And the villager says, Plant and animal domestication is the key. We grow edible plants ourselves right out of the ground, time after time. And this person says, yum, as he's harvesting from this plant. And the villager says, animals too. We control their reproduction to select desirable characteristics and eliminate bad ones. And the villager, the hunter-gatherer says, wow, how can we live the Neolithic way? And the villager says, you can start by joining us in the village. Leave your troubles behind. And there's a little disclaimer. It says, some hunting and gathering may be necessary to maintain dietary variety and avoid famine. And so you've got this villager. And it says, enjoy regular meals. Build permanent structures. Be civil. Settle down. Reshape your environment. Be sociable. Form complex societies. The Neolithic Revolution is defined as the development of agriculture, farming. And it started somewhere around, nobody was taking notes, somewhere around 10,000 B.C. So, um, the big questions are two. Number one, why agriculture? And what would this lead to? After wandering around for thousands of years, why would agriculture allow humans to settle in one spot and what would this lead to? Key terms. First of all, culture. Culture is a special way of life followed by a group of people. Homo sapiens. What are those? They're us, human beings. Early human humans originated in Africa sometime between 400,000 and 200,000 years ago. Nobody was keeping a record at the time, so nobody is sure. What is an ice age? We've had many. An ice age is a significant cooling of temperatures on the Earth, and the Earth has experienced many of these, in fact, uh, some quite recently. The Paleolithic Age, the time when humans hunted and gathered for food. There was no farming. The Neolithic Revolution was a shift from gathering food to producing food by farming and livestock. The Stone Age. We've got two ages here. The Stone Age. The Stone Age strad straddled the Paleolithic Age and the Neolithic Age. The Stone Age was an era of tools made of stone for hunting and gathering food, and then later for farming and construction. The Stone Age lasted well into the Neolithic era. And then came the Bronze Age. The Bronze Age was the era that replaced the Stone Age once people figured out how to make bronze by mixing copper with a little bit of tin. Early humans in Africa. Human origins. Fossil evidence shows that early humans first appeared in Africa. Why do we believe this? Because archaeologists have found the oldest human footprints on Earth in East Africa. Later, these footprints and other pieces of evidence were identified as being from Homo sapiens, us. In the Stone Age, tools were made of stone, obviously. But people developed the use of fire, they developed speech, they developed religious beliefs, and people planned and conducted large-scale 
animal hunts. Humans began to use their minds to control nature. As they struggled for survival, they found food daily, they protected each other, they used fire, they built shelters, they made clothing, they used spoken language. They created artwork on cave walls using paint made from mud, charcoal, or even blood. They created jewelry, such as necklaces using seashells and bear claws and lion teeth. And they lived in small groups of 25 to 70 people. There were no countries. There were no armies. There were no jobs except for hunting and gathering for food. There were no social classes. There were no formal governments. And there was no writing. There was no economy as we know it. There was a little reason for groups of people to trade with each other because everybody did the same things to survive. And people lived on what they were able to kill and gather that day. You couldn't store animal meat. You couldn't carry a large supply along with you. You were on foot. You were walking. And these groups of people would migrate, hunting and gathering for food as they went. There were no cities or villages to live in. There were no farms to stay and work on. And the animals that people hunted followed yearly migratory routes, so the people also followed these same migratory routes. And this was called a nomadic life. People moved constantly, and they moved in a repeating seasonal pattern. And this meant that they returned to the same places over and over again, year after year. They used sets of tools made of stone, bones, and wood, and they hunted animals and gathered nuts and berries and leaves and roots. And they discarded the seeds of the plants that they ate in the same places year after year. Well, the climate warmed up as an ice age ended. And nobody knows for sure, but perhaps the big animals that people were hunting couldn't adapt to this climate change. And perhaps the people began to overhunt these big animals. But either way, the animals that people normally hunted may have started to become scarce. And this scarcity would have made hunting harder to do. At the same time, year after year, people were throwing away the seeds from the plants that they were gathering and eating in particular spots along these migratory routes that they had. And then they would return to those same spots the following year and discover that plants were growing in the same places where they had thrown away those seeds. And eventually people figured out that the seeds that they had thrown away the previous year had somehow caused new plants to grow the next year. And people began to, deliver, to deliberately plant seeds to produce food. And farming resulted. And since people weren't moving around because they were farming, they could store food. And so surpluses of food, more food than was needed, now became possible. And people began to do domesticate certain animals, horses and oxen, sheep, goats, pigs, chickens. Now, you can hunt and gather in small bands, but you can't farm that way. You can't farm alone. Farming is very hard work and requires lots of labor. There were no tractors during this time. All that work requires a large group of people living and working as a community. And people are needed to do such large-scale jobs as tool making and building irrigation and building walls plowing and planting and harvesting and storing and processing the harvest and protecting the food. So let's have a contrast between uh, before agriculture where you were, there was hunting and gathering and after agriculture where you had the domestication of plants. And you also had the domestication of animals. 
What caused the transition from hunting and gathering to agriculture? Well, we can chalk it up to climate change. We talked about that. We talked about the decline in big game for hunting, forced people to do something else, and also the availability of wild plants for domestication. So we've got this chart, and we're going to go right down. We're going to compare Paleolithic to Neolithic, and we're going to look at five different things. The social aspect, politics, political aspect, economics, the cultural, and this thing called demographics, the study of the movements and patterns of people. Well, let's look at the Paleolithic era and the social aspect. Social equality was the norm in the Paleolithic era. Everybody in the group provided for the group's needs in the same way. And gender equality, equity between men and women, was common. Since women's contributions, the gathering, and their ability to procreate was vital to the survival of the group. But in the Neolithic era, once people learned how to farm, the social situation changed. Social classes emerged based on wealth, skin color, job status, and gender. And this created vast inequities among people. Women lost equal status with men. Their primary role became child rearing and child bearing, and they were increasingly confined to the home. Men's primary role became farming and protecting the community settlement. And this was increasingly outside the home. So men and women started operating in different spheres, different places. The political situation. Back in the Paleolithic era, before farming, it's very different. There were no formal governments. There were no law codes. There were no armies necessary. Important decisions were made by the tribal elders since they had the most wisdom and the most experience. But then in the Neolithic era, once people began to farm, the political situation changed drastically. Complex governments emerged in order to control, regulate, and defend that food supply. Monarchy, Rule by one king was the most popular and pretty much the only form of government that there was at the beginning. And governments were all patriarchal. In other words, they gave power and privilege to men. And important decisions were made by kings and priests and warriors. The people who protected the food also had high political status. In the Paleolithic era, before farming, what was the economic situation? Well, people hunted and gathered. Um, they hunted animals, gathered plants and fruits and nuts for food. And people only hunted and gathered what they could eat, immediately eat that day. There were no surpluses. There was no extra food to supply other kinds of workers besides hunters and gatherers. Trade was minimal or non-existent. But in the Neolithic era, the economic situation changed quite a bit once we learned to farm. While some hunter-gatherers remained, most people became one of the following. Farmers, which are sedentary agriculturalists, they do agriculture and they don't move, or herders, nomadic pastoralists. Food surpluses allowed for the specialization of labor. You could now feed people with that extra food who didn't farm, and those people could become things like artists and warriors and priests and farmers and on and on and on. The list is endless. And trade developed between civilizations. Cultural. In the Paleolithic era before farming, the situation was like this. People created cave paintings and they made simple statues of fertility goddesses. But organized religion did not exist. People were either polytheistic, and we'll talk about what that means, or they were animistic, which meant they believed in 
energy around that, that lived in the rocks and the plants and the animals. But things changed drastically in the Neolithic era once people began to farm. Culture changed quite a bit. The arts like painting and sculpture and literature and poetry and architecture, things like pyramids and temples and palaces became important features of civilization. And organized religions with priests and holy books and rituals and ethical codes emerged and became important aspects of life. And then the demographic situation. In the Paleolithic era, before people farmed, people lived in small groups of 20 to 40. Larger groups could not be supported by hunting and gathering. You couldn't gather or hunt enough food within walking distance to support more than that. And people were nomadic. They followed animal migrations in order to provide food for the group. But in the Neolithic era, once people learned how to farm, it was different. Some people, eventually the majority, began to live in villages and even cities with large populations. <laughs> 